Well, there's a dummy half. Goes himself. Got it. Oh, he's he going to give the try. Turn it up. He's dead to drop that. Turn it up. G'day and welcome to the first edition of the Footy Show. In the next hour, we'll be looking at the latest in rugby league, tackling the big issues, having a shot at our past the ball competition, and giving our viewers the chance to be part of the fun. Joining me today, Peter Sterling. Sterling, your Parramatta Reels are going okay. The first four weeks have been very impressive. A little bit disappointed they didn't get the money last week, but St George played well. I think a, a good Parramatta is, is good for the competition. And Blocker, uh, what's you doing with the, uh, <laughs> the Tigers? <laughs> Uh, mate, just the last pass, I think. They, they had plenty of try scoring opportunities yesterday, Paul, but uh, just the last pass uh, mm. let them down. Recently, an archaeological team went to the Indies and they found a mummy. Now, whilst they were carbon dating that mummy, it sort of came alive. He joins us today, Rex Mossett. <laughs> <laughs> What's doing, Rex? Good to have you back, son. Is that the sort of action I'm going to get? On this oh, show? It's just starting. All right, I can take it. Good to have you back, Rex. Nice I'm to be back. talking footy because. Uh, one of the legends of the game. In Brisbane, and hello to Gene Miles, our Queensland stalwart. <laughs> stalwart. Good afternoon, Fatty. Broncos, uh, a bit lucky yesterday, Gene? Oh, I don't know about lucky, Fatty. I think it was a, a very good game, and um, they'll be quite satisfied to walk away from, um, from Leichhardt over with uh, the two points. Well, we'll hear from you later talking about that game. We've got a couple of special guests joining us today as well. We've got Terry Lamb from Canterbury and Brian Smith from the Balmain side. We'll be talking to them later about uh, the game that was just played yesterday and also the game that's on tomorrow. Uh, before we get into the action, we invite you to have our say on one of the game's burning issues. The question today is, is the head-high tackle rule too tough? To vote yes on that question, simply phone 0055 60256 and to vote no, dial 0055 60257. We're going to keep the lines open throughout the show and update you on the voting. At the end of the show, we're going to give away $1,000 to one of those lucky callers. Uh, it'll be uh, picked by the computer, won't be picked by any of us here. Um, so, Kim, if you're out there... <laughs> Give us a ring, love, because we need the money. <laughs> so we've got the formalities out of the way, so let's take a look at the action. And uh, the Brisbane-Balmain game was played yesterday. Brisbane won the match 12 points to 6. Brian, where did your side fall down? I think you've already sort of pointed to it already, Fatty. Um, Blocker re reiterated it as well. We just can't finish it off. We um, made about five or six clean breaks yesterday. And um, I was at fault on one of them. I think um, I'd managed to make a bit of a break and I chip kicked instead of looking inside for a pass. And that was uh, pretty much the story of the day. Brisbane had a, Brisbane had a couple of chances and uh, scored both times. It had an element of luck, as instance, that particular kick there that rebounded off a, a Balmain player straight back to uh, the Hancock, and he went through. And what about the forward pass, Rex? <laughs> well, of course, it no was one a says anything pass. about the forward pass. Well, there's no use criticising referees. No. <laughs> but Brian, it's not only been yesterday where the Tigers have fallen down. I know you've only been back there for the last couple of games, but. Now, as we've said in our coverage, and we've done quite a few Balmain games, they've been in position to win matches, and I, you know, it's something that you've, you've got to learn over the weeks. Why isn't that lesson being learnt that when you're in a winning position, it's just not happening? Yes, yeah, Thurlow, I mean, we're mystified by it as well. If we knew what the ingredient was, we'd all be you know, drinking it or smoking it or whatever you have to do to, to, to get there, get across the line. But um, I think we're playing with a little bit of... Uh, um, lack of confidence, I suppose, and I think that that's why we, we're failing to, to finish off. Um, you know, one loss goes into two, and then three, and you're on a roll. And you know, we haven't panicked or anything. And Jones is doing a good job to keep us all together, but um, it's tough. And we've had a tough draw to begin with. Every side we've played against are pretty much semi-final contenders so far. And if there are any easy games, we hope to have uh, the next next few weeks anyway. Is it's sort of a bit of a let off in the pressure for us. I'd like to comment on a couple of players that I thought were totally outstanding. I'd like to mention Gilmeister particularly. I thought he had a top line game, a real good game, tough front on defence. And Sinclair, I believe, was going to be thrown out of the club some stage last year because he was what is termed loosely in the trade a mug. But he's turned it around, and I give Alan Jones a lot of well, credit I don't for know that. Well, I don't know where you hear information from, Rex. There was no way that uh, Jason Sinclair was ever going to be let out of the club. Well, so I'm told uh, reliably that he was, that well, he was causing too much trouble. Well, the reliable source isn't well, telling you the truth, Well, my reliable mate. source was my reliable who, source, who okay? Who is it, mate? And you just be quiet about oh, it. Oh, yeah, good. Yeah. Hey, Gino, yeah. <laughs> still with us up there in Brisbane? We're going to break this up. Well, the Broncos, it, uh, Premiership, it, Premiership, Premiership it, favourites, uh, they're not playing too well, are they? No, they've started off pretty ordinary this season, but last week was a great indication that they're getting back to their running best. And uh, although they didn't show that yesterday, that you know, to uh, to come away from Leichhardt, as I said previously, with two points, and you know, Belmain being the bogey side and Leichhardt being a bogey ground, you know, Wayne Bennett was satisfied, but uh, you know, not overly uh, not overly happy with the effort. Tell us about the form of Alan Langer. Well, I'll just uh, update you on his injury first. He he copped a bump to his uh, to his knee and. Um, 
it's not as bad, not as bad as first thought. He, he was up dancing last night at a nightclub, so he'll be back next week. So there's <laughs> not no you. <laughs> no, He's been there to see it. I had no <laughs> was his wife with him, Gina? <laughs> no, unfortunately, she's just had a baby, so she was at home minding the uh, the week old baby. But um, so, nice, so there's, nice so there's no up. great. Yeah, well, there's no great concern there, and uh, you know I, I think they're not far off uh, coming good. And they're um, they're keeping the same 13 on the paddock again now, so uh, you know I look forward to the next couple of weeks. They've got some hard games, Penrith next week, and uh, you know when, when they do play the top sides, they do play uh, play attractive footy. Is Wayne Bennett the happy man at the moment? Well, he's happy, you know, as I said, to walk away from Leica with the two points, but uh, and he's given the guys off. Uh, the day off and today and, and tomorrow to go to the races at Caloundra with the guys having a horse up there so they can uh, do some punting and uh, just uh, just rest for a little while and uh, you know he'll start revving them up for Penrith but you know he's happy now that they're back in the winning list for sure. I don't know whether it's a cliche Gene but like do you think that it is a, a tangible thing that sides do lift themselves to play against the Premiers and if it is it, you know is it something that the guys have come to the realisation that well yeah we've got to be at our best every week? Yeah, I think so. We found that, uh, you know, when, when we play, well, when the guys play away, that um, whoever we're playing lift themselves, and now they've got that extra, that extra tag of being the Premier. So, you know, that's, that's given that little bit extra incentive to the opposition. And maybe they're playing as well as last year, but that's not good enough at this stage, and they've just got to lift themselves a little. Because the big difference, really, for Brisbane this year has probably been the fact that they've, they haven't had a great ability in getting the ball over the line. If you have a look at their for and against, they've allowed more points against going into yesterday's game than they've been able to score and the big attraction with Brisbane has been the fact that they've probably been the most dangerous side with the football in their hands but the defences really are coping very well with Brisbane at the moment. Yeah they are. I, I don't say that they're, uh, they've changed their game plan at all. They're still throwing the ball around as we saw in that first try that uh, Steve Renouf scored. You know that was ad lib football and just good uh, good attacking football and they stayed on their feet and uh, supported the ball carrier. So. You know, I don't think they're doing anything different there. Maybe the, the opposition have wised up a bit and uh, you know, they're, they're a lot more hungry to knock the Premiers off. Yeah, Blocker, um, probably the question's got to be asked, the, the Alan Jones knockers are going to come out and force again. Is he under some pressure there or not? Well, I'm not really sure if he's under pressure, Paul. I, I think you know, he doesn't go out and miss the tackles no. and, and drop the football. I, I just think there's a lot of young blokes in the side that have had a bit too much pressure put on them, expecting them to be the experienced ones that, that make all the decisions in the game. Yeah. Well, on Friday night, we ventured out to the Sydney Football Stadium, saw a great game of footy between East and South, and uh, East won the match 18-4, but South and, and Rex, uh, we talked before, wasn't there some great front-on defence in this game? Well, I've never seen... Uh, well, I, that's a cliche. I don't think what you said before was a cliche. I think all teams lift when they play against the, the Premiers. Anyway, I, I believe that in this game, Johnson put on one of the best half a games, ta head-on tackling performances that I've seen in recent memory. He was absolutely devastating and uh, I think he's got to the stage now that some of the players are actually looking for him and being very concerned that he's opposite them in a tackle. Well, is that good, Rex, when unfortunately he got there hurt, he is he was carried off? I saw about half a dozen roosters' hands go up yeah. to say, well, look, I'll help <laughs> carry this stretcher off. Yeah. 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 Quickly. <laughs> Souths had some chances, didn't they? They bombed that try in the first five minutes and from then on it just went from bad to worse for them. They made enough breaks to win the game. The lack of support and the last pass going to ground uh, let them down badly. When the South Sydney side lost both Johnson and Mark Carroll, they didn't seem to have the sting up front. They come back into the game in the second half and uh, and it was all over once Eastern Suburbs scored again. We said they, in the pre-season, showed so much promise and it was oh, a young oh, player. So <laughs> Welcome. That really came to the fore. But we did ask the question whether they were going to be able to maintain that week in, week out mm. over 40 minute halves and we saw Shane Wilson play with so much distinction at fullback, he's now not there, Slattery at 5'8 has been out of the side, Fuller hasn't been in the starting lineup. so you know the young guys have probably struggled a little bit but having yeah. said that they've still got enormous ability and something that will come to the fore. Just uh, looking at that try then scored by Appleby. Clearly actually, should have been yeah, a penalty try. No it should have been a penalty try and the kick should have been taken from in front of the stick. That's right and that would cost the, uh, the Eastern Suburbs side the opportunity to kick a goal which they could yeah. barely do all night. And what about it, this bloke Silver how easy yeah. did he run? It makes you wonder what some of these in-goal judges are doing. I mean, how would he... <laughs> I don't know how it? he did it, but he did. It was an aberration. It was one of those things that happened occasionally. Yeah. And fortunately, yeah. the conversion was yeah. successful anyway. Otherwise, the kick would have been taken in front. So they really did make it a, a very difficult two points when it should have been a gift, really. He's a nice player, Craig Field. Very impressive young player, isn't he? The halfback. He made a lot of busts. Yeah. That's a, that's what about a, that one? <laughs> I mean, get up. Get up quickly. <laughs> What's wrong with <laughs> you? Yeah. Oh, gee. It didn't affect him. No. <laughs> Not much. Kicking the ball forward straight after. Lucky he had his head gear on there was a bit of a head clash it there. is Craig Field saw the opportunity from dummy half got through some uh, bit dusty east defence 
and he was about their best player. Gary Freeman, on the other hand, controlled the rucks again well for East, put the bomb up, and this was... Uh, He's the always there, isn't he, Paul? Uh, always there. The try that clinched it for East, uh, all for going over in the corner. Well, well, what about it. Eastern Suburbs this year? Like, I I've heard criticism that they play too stodgy a style of football to be competitive. I must admit, looking at on paper last year, they had no right to lead the competition for three months, yet they did. And again, they're up on seven points now. So you well, know, they that... weren't stodgy the other night, were they? No, it's that's a right. most entertaining game. And listen, let's give a wrap right now to Harrigan, Great yeah, game. who I yeah. thought had an absolutely yeah. outstanding game. And the week league. before too. Well, perhaps he did the week before. I didn't see that one, yeah. but uh, I best... thought it was absolutely great. I, he kept them yeah. kept them wide apart. And he wasn't blowing his whistle. And he wasn't blowing his whistle. There was no penalty for the first 24 minutes. He's the best refereeing performance I've seen all year. Be well, interesting was, to uh, see. Gino, you're still there. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see what Eastern Suburbs or Mark Murray, for that fact, is going to do when the arrival of Martin Athiah comes on the scene because the Eastern Suburbs wingers are certainly going very well. They're, great. Yeah, they're going terrific. It's Two actually each. debatable whether a fire comes each. out because of the insurance problem that uh, normally players get insured for about $800. Who's your movie star? <laughs> Wigan wants 33000 That's why I'm not back there this year. <laughs> yeah, no, I'll turn it up. <laughs> we'll be back after the break to preview the rest of Round 5. Stay with us. No, Mr Lamb, in all seriousness, the reason nearly 800 people are here to honour you tonight is that your track record stands alone. In the words of Shakespeare, you are like bright metal on a sullen ground, your talents towering over your faults. You have a career that has spread from district to state to nation. You are and have been eulogised and lionised by experts and fans alike. You are the player's player. As a friend of mine, an Italian friend said, if they had a team of legends, you would be the Don, the first among equals. And may I pay you my own little homage, Terry, when I honestly say that, honest to God, you were nearly good enough to play for St. George. <laughs> A yeah, very funny man, Brian Dahl there at, uh, at your night the other night, Terry. Um, you need an armoured car to get away from there, I reckon. It was 800 people at $400 a head or something? $400, yeah. No, $75 a head, but it was a great night. Great night. Very proud of it. Yeah, you fully deserve it too. Thank you. Well, if you want to put yourself in the running for a cash prize of $1,000, lodge your vote right now. The question is, is the head high tackle rule too tough? To vote yes to that question, simply phone 00556 and to vote no, Double O double five six O two five seven. We're going to keep the lines open throughout the show and bring in the counting as we log the calls. So just get on that blower like this and go yes or no. Doesn't matter if you answer yes or no. How uh, do you do that again? Yes. Oh, you no. pick the phone up and say yes. Oh, Packed into some scrums. Amstrad so. phones are great phones too. Well, tomorrow night at eight thirty p.m. we'll bring you a full replay of the Canterbury Bulldogs battle with one of the season's surprise packages, the Parramatta Eels. You'll see that at uh, eight thirty tomorrow night. Terry Lamb, you're expecting a tough game, no doubt, because um, they have been a surprise. They're playing some great football, the Eels. Yeah, they're a, a young, enthusiastic team. Uh, last few years have been together. They've brought Paul Dunn and Michael Speechley, who's sort of controlling the game. And, you know, they're just keen, and they really want to win. I think they want to do Mick McCronin proud as well. But your side, I mean, they're going uh, as well, better than anything, aren't they? Undefeated, and you've had some big wins, especially against Brisbane in Auckland. Uh, what's been the secret, say, the turnaround from your side last year to this year? Maybe someone like Martin Bella getting you going oh, forward? Yeah, Marty's going real well at the moment. Luke Goodwin's come in at a fullback. We had a uh, problem last year there. But I think the players have just matured over the last two years and learnt, learnt by their mistakes. You're not going too bad yourself, are you, <laughs> for an old bloke? Oh, they keep me going, the young blokes. Yeah. You blokes want to ask a question or are you just going to let me ask it? <laughs> yeah, how much longer are you going to play for? Oh, it's a pretty hard question, Rex, so I just taking it week by week at the moment. Is it true that you can't train at the moment in the legitimate sense? You don't go out and do uh, the uh, the night's training? I, I don't do anything over uh, about 100 metres uh, running. And when the other blokes do the 200s, I just go inside and, and punch the bags and get on the bike. And that obviously it's doing you uh, no harm because you're playing well enough. Well, all, we've had four games now and the match, match fitness is there, so uh, yeah. that's what's keeping me going as well. But Jimmy Dimmick, for a player so young, he's, he's got great ball skills. I think he's been the unsung hero for Canterbury in the early premiership matches. For sure. He's, uh, he's just turned 21 last week and he's playing great football and, and very mature football. Just on to tomorrow's game, Terry, you've obviously watched Parramatta the last couple of weeks. Without any doubt, the big difference with the Parramatta side this year has been their defence. They actually, I think, currently now have the best defensive record yes, in the competition. 32 points against and we've got 34. But the... <laughs> <laughs> oh, mate. 
Is so, that including a field goal you might have kicked? <laughs> uh, what a miss there. You have scored 40 points more than them. So your, your attacking game is something that you'll be looking to, to capitalise against what has been a very strong Parramatta defence led by their two new buys, Dunn and Spoochley. Yeah, it's, we've just got to defend ourselves firstly and then our tackle come. But their defence, we watched the video and it's, it's pretty, pretty tight up the middle and uh, maybe might get them around the, around the wing spots uh, with uh, young Brett Dallas. He's very quick over, over 100 metres, as you know, in that Storwell gift. What Brilliant. sort of a loss, Jared McCracken? Uh, well, Crackers is, is a great loss. He's, he's a hard, strong player and he's tough. He's not scared to take the ball up. He gives the forwards a rest when he, we need him. And he's a great defender. Uh, he will be missed, but Andy Patmore's in there and he'll do a good job. Gino, how do you see that one going uh, between Canterbury and Parra? I'd just like to ask Bar a question. The side must be going extremely well to have Ewan McGrady in reserve grade, Bar. Yeah, Panda's had a knee injury and he just came back from the knee injury. I spoke to him yesterday <coughs> and it's still a little bit sore. Uh, but, you know, he's a great player to have on the bench. He, um, you couldn't ask a better, better attacking player. There's not too many more exciting players around than him. Yeah, he's... Uh, He's getting there. I hope his defence improves, but I think it, it will. Uh, just in time, he's got to give his confidence back in reserve grade. What, uh, Jason Smith, where's he come from? Well, he's, he's a brother of Darren Smith. He's a Queensland boy. He's, uh, at the moment, he's uh, uh, on the train-on squad for the Queensland he's team. He's beefed up a bit too. Yeah. He's, over the off -season. he's put about uh, six or seven kilos on in the off-season, and he really needed to do that to... Been on your diet blocker, is he? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, Paddy... <laughs> No. <laughs> <laughs> you got more chins than a Chinese favourite, brother. Yeah. <laughs> oh, 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 we're yeah. starting to give it to me, are we? Yeah. Don't forget Rex is up the end of the table, yeah. all right? That's what I was just about to remind you. Keep going on him. Has Chris Anderson taken your side at all, Terry? Like the, the influence that you're having on the young players is enormous. Is it something that you've, you've sat down and discussed? Like, I remember watching you playing the Brisbane game where Luke Goodman, late in the game, made a couple of mistakes. He had a fine match that night just a couple of things. It's something that you and the coach have sat down and, and thought, well, how is the best way that I can show my responsibility to these guys? I think it's, uh, if the players make the mistake, I've just, you know, it's silly bagging a player on the field if they make a mistake. You just go up to them and say, listen, bad luck, you know, you'll, you'll improve and um, you, you'll make up for it. And he did make up for it in that Brisbane game, set up the try for Jimmy Dimmick. So it's just a matter of talking to the players. If, if they want help, uh, give them help. Well, our match of the day tonight is uh, West playing Illawarra down there at Campbelltown Stadium. West's had a bit of a blow. Jason Liddon's pulled out of their side. Andrew Willis comes in. And uh, Justin Dooley goes on at the fresh reserves bench. Still, you're heading out there for that one. How do you see it going? Well, I've been an enormous fan of Illawarra uh, towards the end of last season and the beginning of this year. They probably haven't played as good a football as I thought they would, even though they did strike back last week. Western Suburbs have been a gross disappointment. I really expected big things yeah. from them. Jason Taylor has been outstanding for them, but in a lot of cases he hasn't had a lot of support, and I've been surprised at the way that West have played. With Warren Ryan in charge, you'd think a, a very disciplined approach, which is the way we've seen all their sides that he has coached play. Uh, but I think they've sort of carried the form from the pre-season competition into the main domestic competition, and it was, it's not going to work for them. Well, you think they do it harder today because uh, Edgar Britt's out and uh, <laughs> uh, the other bloke, Cole White, he's not playing either. So they're lacking in forward power. Illawarra's got Paul McGregor back on their side too, first time for a few weeks. And so. just signed a new contract with the Steelers yeah. too. Well, the new side's coming in. They're all looking for new players. Rex, what about you? How do you think? Illawarra or West? Yeah, I go for Illawarra. I think West have got a few problems at the moment. Illawarra, I think, will lift after their flogging by Manly. Uh, uh, and uh, I've, got, uh, I've always had a great rap on that side. I like the look of the side, and I think that they're a young side that's growing together and they'll develop into a very good unit. I think this year might be the year they get back in the in the uh, semis again. They did last year. Uh, and, yeah, I reckon they're a good side. You mentioned McGregor back. Also, Dale Fritz came back into the side last week and straight away there was a noticeable change. I think he's one of their underestimated players. Defensively, very, very strong. But I think the good work done by Rodwell and McGregor in a lot of ways yeah. is the fact they get good early ball from and them. And they've missed that over, over the last couple well, of they, weeks. They too. led East 18 block. You know, yeah. after about uh, 60 minutes and let East back into it. That's good form going into this game, isn't it? Considering East uh, won easily the other night. Well, East don't give you too much, do they? You know, we've spoken about, oh, I don't know if it's a stodgy style of play at all, but they, you know, they're very disciplined in what they do and they're a difficult side to beat. So to be able to run up an 18 nil lead against them mm. shows that you've got strength. of Illawarra, plenty of strike Illawarra last year in the semi-finals lacked one power player in the forwards, I thought. And uh, buying Bobby Linder was probably their best move that they've yeah. made all, yeah. all off-season. Well, there's other matches today too. Uh, Saints are playing Penrith at, down at Cogra. Canberra's playing Cronulla. Newcastle on North and Gold Coast are at home to Manly. And Rex, Mighty Eagles are going all right under the new coach. 
Yes, I give Fulton a lot of the credit. Uh, I think uh, partially Fulton, partially having got rid of the other guy. No names, no Pactrill. At this stage, there's no point in criticising uh, people that have got a health problem. I've been highly critical of uh, the coaching in the club for a couple of years, as you will well know, and I've had my say at the annual general meeting well, this yeah, year. Well, yeah, you did stand up at the general meeting and had a bit of a lash at him, didn't you? And uh... I didn't mention his name. No. I mentioned the coaching, but I didn't yeah. mention his name. And uh, I was... Uh, I'm, I'm agreeably surprised at the speed with which Fulton has been able to turn it around. He's done it in two ways. A, because he's the Australian coach and he's obviously a lot of the Manly players consider their representative chance the, under yeah. the new Australian coach. Uh, and the other thing is that... Uh, uh, the other thing is that Fulton is a guy... I think he's got enough brains to realise that he's given them a release. He's given them the opportunity now to play a football that is the tradition of the Manly club to move the ball around. The other guy didn't do that. He no, would encompass are. them into a sort of a, a strict, a very strictly uh, li a limited mm. area. I've seen them a few times. They're playing some wonderful mm. football. The Eagles. They're, a lot of the young players have come through, and Bozo's given them the confidence to go out and do their yeah. own thing. And they're playing great. And the old hands like Hasler, uh, Ian Roberts, well, Hasler's Lyons, still yeah. an incredibly good athlete and, and a marvellous player. He really is a, a combination of great athleticism yeah. and great playing ability. But uh, the young guys are performing marvellously at the moment. Some of the young guys in the in the side are just going so well. Ryan and in the centre. It'll get harder and harder every yeah. week now. Oh, I, I agree. But let's let them yeah. enjoy oh, it while mate, they yeah, can. They're playing yeah. well. I'm, I'm not taking away from them, but uh, it will get harder. The for them. side can't be tra travelling too badly if they've got Jeff Tooby yeah. playing in reserve grade at well, the moment. So after a cruel start with injuries to those sort of guys, mm. you've got Ian Roberts, who I don't think has really been fit for three years. I, don't, no. I certainly well, don't. Well, I reckon think Roberts is one of the classic examples of the new look Manly side because now at least we've got Roberts going forward and offloading the football. Yeah. He's done that <clears throat> about 19 times last week. A couple of them fell on the ground. That's the way ball distributors are. Yeah. The rest of the time he's getting the ball away and we're suddenly playing broken, playing broken it, field yeah. football. Yeah. And that's one of the reasons. He's a classic example of the new look coaching technique. So you're trying to say mainly by 30 today? Uh, I wouldn't say by uh, I'll 30. I'll say by 29. Okay. <laughs> well, thanks for joining us. Jane, you're coming down tonight, aren't you, for the game tomorrow? Yeah, I'll see you tomorrow, Fatty. All right, then. Good as gold. Uh, we getting enjoyed you here. To early getting ball. here early. Yeah, that's good. Well, after the break, the greatest comeback in the history of the game, Rex the Moose Mossop and the Pass the Ball competition. It's back. Stay right where you are. Well, one lucky viewer is in for a good time if he or she can win the $1,000 prize and offer to voters in our phone poll giveaway. All you have to do is respond to the question, is the head high tackle rule too tough? To vote yes, simply phone 0855 to vote no. Make it a seven on the end of it. Now, ladies and gentlemen, out there in rugby league land, it's time for the return of one of football's most famous traditions, an event made famous by a legend of the game. It's welcome back to Rex the Goose Mossop and the Pass the Ball competition, where players have the chance to win an eight-day Qantas holiday at Club Med Bali. Here's Rex. Thank you, Fatty. And this is the 25th year of the passing competition, would you believe? But only the first uh, occasion here at Channel 9. And I'd like to welcome to Ferris uh, Ashton over there, who's uh, standing out there to give the balls back and pass yeah, the ball to the players who are doing it. Nice I think you'll you agree there is a similarity between the present-day Ferris and Blocker it's Roach. Start. It's a start, Rex. You're looking it's good, start, mate. Rex. You're looking very good. <laughs> the competitors you've already met. We've got Terry Lamb my immediate, uh, on my immediate left. And we've got uh, the other guy from the Balmain Club, Brian Smith. Now, it's, uh, I'll explain the rules to you so you know exactly what the story is. We've got the board here. We've got ten for the elephant's eye, bull's eye, with a target hit here in the middle. You've got seven here, five, three and one. If the ball lands on the line, it, you take the lower score. I'm the sole judge of fact, so no bloody yeah. arguments. You understand? Yeah. All right, now go up there, fellas, and be prepared to take the pass from uh, Blocker. And I think... Uh, Brian Smith, your first cab off the rink. Be used to running off a few of these, eh, Smitty? Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> now, watch the footfall, because if you footfall, I'll take any score away from you. OK, fire when ready. Seven. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> Rounds of applause. And another seven. Oh, he's gone right around nice it this one. time. That's very, very good indeed. Uh, three sevens to 21. 31. <coughs> no, hold it, hold it. Terry Lamb. Not the other side, eh? He puts the pressure on me. Terry Lamb. <laughs> <laughs> OK. First lot of passes from right to left. Seven. 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 You've got to get it up a bit. Seven. 
28 plays 31. Now the other side. Okay. <laughs> On the line, I think five. Oh, Rex. On the line, up. five. That was a seven. Five. <laughs> seven. No correspondence will be entered into. Another seven. And another seven. Three sevens are 21. 26 and 28. Eight and six is 14. 12, 54. Is that correct? Yeah, carry the three, okay. that's it. <laughs> okay, right out, Terence, let's go. Seven. Seven. Oh, blimey, five. He's gone. Needs a ten. And a seven. Twenty-six. He's dummy, Rex. Thirty-one. What score is that? Yeah, you ran second, Rex. 57 54 is correct. All right, now join me up here, fellas. You had a bit of a blowout there on the, on the left. Come over here on the right, mate. You're the winner. Bad left arm. The bad left arm, eh? We've got some uh, good prizes for you. I can't believe just how good the prizes are, to be quite honest. Uh, you've got a Gillette Sensor wet pack and a Platinum Edition razor and uh, an Amstrad STR 100 stereo. And of course, you're still in the running for the Qantas Club Med uh, Holiday in Bali. The runner-up, this is you. That was your lot of prizes, the first this lot of really uh, The what Gillette Sensor wet pack, just hold the phone. And <laughs> Amstrad STR 100 stereo. So there you go, give them a present. Ryan, yeah. is that for me or for... That's oh, for you. I, yeah. won't, oh, I won't kiss you or anything, mate. <laughs> no, you can shake my hand, though. <laughs> OK, you are go on into the semi-finals. You've got the opportunity. You've picked up your goodies and your blow. All Thanks the best. Thanks very much, Rex. Good luck to you, mate. Thanks, Rex. Thanks, OK, Bob. that's it for the well, passing well, competition for week. this year, uh, this week. And uh, we'll yeah. uh, off back to the gentleman who's in charge. We've lost nothing, Rex. Back in a moment. <laughs> In response to our question, is the head high tackle rule too tough? So far, 40% of callers have voted yes and 60% have lodged a no vote, which is very interesting. The phone lines are still open. We've had 8 million so far, but we want some more. To vote yes to that question, <laughs> simply phone 00556256 and to vote no, dial 00556027. Don't forget that one lucky caller stands to win 1,000 Oxfords just for being part of the debate. And to help us take a closer look at the head high tackle issue, it's welcome to the Chief of the New South Wales Judiciary, Vince Bruce. Vince, you've been a very busy man lately. Oh, no busier than normal, I don't think. Mm, yes, well, before we talk to Vinny, let's see what actually <laughs> happens at a typical judiciary setting. We took our cameras for the very first time for a peep at Monday night session. This is the only view league fans had of the accused up until this week. Players at the steps of the league about to face the sports lawmaking body. That was until the footy show gained a historic first. This is the league judiciary that's caused headlines. The chairman is QC Vince Bruce. The other two, former footballers Ron Coote and Peter Wynn. This rare and exclusive insight was taken on Monday night. Before the panel, Russell Wire, who received eight weeks, and Mario Fanick banished for two. We can't show you their faces for legal reasons. Both cases were debated vigorously by well-known solicitors, Newspaper reports claim the cost of the suspension of players and clubs can range up to $60,000. The judiciary has been the centre of much criticism this week, along with the sighting of players. Some form of judiciary dates back to the early 1900s. One of its more unusual decisions to suspend 14 Glebe players back in 1917. Even with the sightings these days, the league doesn't expect that to happen again. Well, basically, here's the law of the game that's causing all the controversy. A player is guilty of misconduct if he, when affecting or attempting to affect the tackle, makes contact with the head or neck of an opponent intentionally, recklessly or carelessly. And Vince Bruce, uh, is it a very grey area? No, I think it's pretty clear. The rule as it stood before it was changed by the International Board last year uh, let 
questions arise as to whether you'd come into contact with the neck as opposed to the head, questions of whether or not it had been intentional. And now the question is, did you come into contact with the neck or the head? And if you did, the next question is, was it intentional, was it reckless, or was it careless? And if it's any one of those three, an offence has been committed. If it's not one of those three, there's no offence. Well, it's got to be one of those three. No? I can't think no. of any other occasion that... that it, <laughs> well, I'm not a fan yeah. of the rule, Vince. I, yeah. I, I must admit that, to me, it, it's a rule that has been brought in for the sake of bringing a rule in. Now, as a player, and I, I know that I've retired and, and didn't play a lot of football over the last couple of years, I, I felt protected in the game. Now, I have to ask about consistency and all these things. I'm looking at this one from Brett Mullins that we just saw then. Why wasn't he suspended under, the, under, under, those, that, rule. under that rule? Well, I, had, I didn't have Mullins before me at any time. When well, we, 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 saw, we saw Brett Mullins go in, tackle a man high, yeah. got sent off. Now, he wasn't suspended. Maybe yeah. we're putting the cart before the mm. horse here. I just think that it's a rule that has been brought in when... Players already felt protected. I know, yeah. as I say, I, I felt protected that if I was taken out illegally, then I, I was in the situation where that player was going to be sent off or cited later with, on, yeah. and I felt comfortable with that. I just look at it that we're putting the livelihood of some of our very best players and the existence of in the game under a great cloud. Um, the likes Pete, of you've, only, you've only got to look at yeah the front-on tackling style of, of the Gilmeisters and the Martin Masalas. Them blokes are, are wondering... You know, how, you know, how am I going to you know, fix my style? They jump in the tackles. That's how Gilmeister makes ball in all tackles. Vince, are you a yeah. rugby league fan? You watch yeah, the game sure. closely. Yep. Do you think players now are tackling higher than they were five, ten years ago? I think they are because there's now a greater emphasis on the, what people call the ball and all tackle. And they go in and they go in at shoulder height. They don't go in at the ball height. They go in higher. And they're rising. The way they're taught to tackle is to rise up to the... To the uh, tackled player. Yeah, Vince, my, my pet hate in the game is is most forwards tackle front on. If yep. a player goes in and, and they say that it takes two to, to tie up the ball, mm. one player goes in and tackles around the hip and the second player comes in with a shoulder shot over the top, which he's room for target and the area is only about six or seven inches. Mm. I mean, even the players are getting penalised for high tackles and sort of looking and the players who are getting tackled are, are looking and, as if to say, well, there was nothing yeah. wrong with that. Well, that may be the case, but what you've got to do is weigh up what the league is trying to achieve, and that is to protect players. So what are we when going to have one-on-one -on -one tacklers? No, no. Peter's just said that people's players' livelihoods are being put at stake by the risk of being suspended. Players' livelihoods are being put at stake by being taken out of the game, having their jaws broken, being injured. But when they... I don't think the whole idea of the rule yeah. was to protect players. And what, what my argument is, is before this year, I, I believe players felt, felt protected. Now, the whole idea of defence is to stop the football. Mm. There will always be an area in the game or room for the game to go low. But the whole idea is to stop the football. You must go high in this game of rugby league. That leaves no margin of error. I believe there should be some margin there. Well, maybe the New South Wales Rugby League and Australian Rugby League are searching for a means of opening the game up and not having those high tackles that are ball and all tackles so that they get the opportunity, the players, to offload the football. That could be a secret agenda they have behind this. I think the game's open enough, Rex. I mean, you know, there's some wonderful, wonderful football. Well, we've seen some pretty ordinary football too in the last yeah, couple of years. Yeah, but that's we've because seen, of the way they're being coached. We've seen, yeah, that's exactly right. But unfortunately, players do what the coach wants, don't they? Mm, Invariably do what the, player, the well, coach wants. I reckon it's better than it's ever been. There's some great attacking players around at the moment and, and young attacking players. Well, if it is a hidden agenda, Rex, like I understand what you're saying, trying to open the game up, but why not just come out and say that, that, OK, we're not trying to protect the players... That's not the first and foremost thing. We are trying to do something with, with the game of rugby league as well and, get, and keep the ball moving. And if that is what they're trying to do, they've gone the wrong way about it anyway because the, the biggest problem with non-ball movement is the third player coming into the tackle. Yeah, yeah so that the should third be the player. area that should be addressed. Yeah. Righto, hold the phone. We're going to have a break now and come back. We're going to cook up a couple of curly ones for Vince. We'll look after <laughs> the break. Oh, yeah. We're 15 quid a win. We've got Vince Bruce with us, uh, who's the head of the judiciary. Lockie, you went up before Vince, didn't you? Uh, a couple of times. How'd you, how'd you go? Uh, six weeks. <laughs> and uh, you think you, he was a bit lenient on you? On you no, or? no, mate, I, uh, I, I took it on the chin, mate. That's yeah. the way it goes. Uh, the thing I'd like to ask uh, Bruce while I've got him here, or, uh, Mr Bruce, I call him Vince now, is that all right? <laughs> That's all right. You don't mind? <laughs> I mean, right. I, had to, uh, I had to be on all fours when I was uh, last time. So I anyway, didn't but, notice uh, it. <laughs> Paul Sirenan sent off for a high tackle and later let off. Uh, yeah, we've got, actually, Blocker, before we, we've got two incidents here we'd like you to have a look at. Oh, good. This is, uh, there's one involving Jared McCracken, who gets uh, 
he gets, got cited, here he is there, throws a punch, got suspended for two weeks uh, for that incident. He was cited by the Cronulla Club. We've got the one with Paul Sirinan in the Penrith game. Similar type incident, swinging arm, punch, he was exonerated. Yeah, but this bloke had the football. He was exonerated, still through the punch. Can, was, can I ask my question now, Paul? Can I just, you, say, to Vince, <laughs> can I just say to Vince, what's the difference between the two? Well, I think there's a significant difference between the two. McCracken was a tackle, or was a strike to a fellow who didn't have the ball. In Sirinan's case, I don't think you can say that he was def that he was punching. Just, just, what he was just doing, quick. his arm was coming over in the course of a tackle. It may have come into contact with his head at some time, but it's not an offence just to come into contact with the head. See, that's that's the big in the public. That that's what they want to see. The question of credibility and consistency. Now we saw mm. someone like Mario Fennick, who received two weeks I mean, last week for mm. for a headbutt. Now Mario doesn't have the best track record, and I I don't know. Is that brought into well, a, into account? Your record's brought into account on not whether you're guilty or not guilty, but it's brought into account on your penalty. Right. But Mario's played a lot of games, and he has been down to the judiciary a lot of times. Yeah, but well, he how doesn't can you get eight weeks for one thing Salvatore and then go in year. again and get two weeks? But he doesn't get convicted how does that very work? often. Craig Salvatore last year, he got something, like, I'm not sure whether it was six or eight weeks. There, and no, he got five. Five and there, weeks. There were significant differences between the two events. Okay. And you, can, you can't really say that you're in t you should get the same sentence for an event or a crime, an offence of the same thing. For example, last year, head-high tackles ranged from cautions to eight weeks. And you've got to look at each case and decide it on the merits of that case, the circumstances, who was involved, what they did, and then make up your mind as best you can. But isn't it, is it's it, a good it, source of income for lawyers to be uh, connected with football clubs and defending them at the judiciary? Well, I'm not sure that that's right because there are a lot of... Um, Lawyers who come down there, who come down there for nothing. For example, Peter Kaplan, who's there regularly for Norths, he's been a lifelong member of the club. He's a member of the football club. Gordon Salia, who's a solicitor that comes with him, they both come for nothing because they are supporters of the club. And I'm sure that applies to lots of other guys that come down there appearing for players. Well, they spend, they spend all their night uh, defending players for nothing. A lot I of can't them do. Oh, I Vince, can't. are you happy with the siding system? That. You happy with the siding system? Is that? anything to do with you but no it's got nothing to do with what do you do think of the siding system that ne it now goes before one person that's John Quayle I would think he's got enough on his plate without having to worry well, about siding in his well, defence Quayle has never quibbled at this he's, no. he's demanded that he do it I'm I mean, not questioning his integrity no, either no I don't know no, but he is what's that mate what's well, that one of his uh, hang huh? on a bit Thanks for coming. <laughs> uh, that's the full-time whistle, so a big vote of thanks to the oh, head of the judiciary, Vince Bruce, for taking part. I uh, hope you and your panel, who uh, Ronnie Coote and Peter Wynn, have an easy session this week. After the break, the result of our phone poll, plus we'll find ourselves a winner in our $1,000 giveaway. And uh, Vince is still here with us, actually. We've, we've actually, Vince, I know you'd like to answer the question we asked you uh, just before we went to the break. Yes, I would. It seems to me that John Quayle's done a terrific job over the years dealing with sightings. And if clubs are prepared to make their complaints, have him deal with them, they'll come up to the judiciary and de dealt with in the proper way as they have been over the years. Right. Okay. Nice answer, Vince. The question we did put to our viewers was, is the head-high tackle rule too tough? Now, 39% voted yes, it's too tough, and 69% said no. And among the callers is one viewer drawn by our computer as the winner of our $1,000 cash prize. It's congratulations to James Griffin from Cessnock up there in the beautiful Hunter Valley, New South Wales. James, well done. Uh, I'd be putting uh, all of that money on uh, Rough Habit tomorrow. It's a special. We haven't had much luck there. Now, the full-time sirens are about to, about to sound here on the opening edition of the footy show. I'd like to thank Rex, Sturlo and Blocker for joining us. It's going to be on every week. It's going to be a lot of fun. Make a date to join us tonight for our big replay of the West versus Illawarra game from Camel Town. Should be a beauty. Meanwhile, grab your club colours and get out to a ground to support your favourite team this afternoon. We'll be back next week with another edition of the footy show. Until next time, it's bye for now.